Hey everyone, Ben here from BW Design, and today I want to talk about objects moving across the surface of another object. I've just got the tutorial preview up here we can take a look at, and we've just got these slimy looking slugs moving across the surface of this evil egg. Then over here we've just got some green slugs moving up and around this landscape object with some cool deformations in the tails. And then down to this candle render where I've just used an instance of my candle from the candle tutorial and I've just added some melting wax dripping down the side. This bottom technique's different from the top two. I'm going to cover both so let's just jump in and get started. So in this first technique what we're going to do is grab a landscape object and let's just make it a little bit higher and give it some more subdivisions so make it 250 segments in width and depth looks a little bit better now what we want to do is build our slug so we're going to get a sphere and we'll make it about 10 centimeters and we'll give it about 32 segments and to that we're going to add a taper modifier so drag that underneath the sphere and for the size we'll make it 20, 20, 20 and just drag the sphere over to the right of the screen then what we can do is under our taper we can dial up the strength we can turn on fill it and just play with this curvature value and We'll make the sphere scale a bit more in the Y. And increase the taper a bit. And see you can get different shapes by moving this up and down. We'll just go for something fairly generic looking for our slug. And we'll reduce the size a little bit. A little bit more scale in the Y. I'll say that's good for now. Alright, so let's just name this slug. Keep track of it. Next, what we'll do is get the freehand spline and just draw a shape. And we'll just make sure we take out any points that are too close. One there. We'll just say that's good. And we're going to need a spline wrap deformer here, or modifier, whatever it's called. I always get those two mixed up. And what we're going to do in the spline wrap, under object, we're going to add that spline in. Let's just call this path. Okay. And with the slug, let's just add that to a null. So I'll grab a null, drag that in. Oops, I missed it. Okay. Call that slug as well. And. Then we're going to drag the spline wrap into the slug group. Okay, so that's actually going to wrap the geometry of our slug to that path. And we'll just change a couple of things here. Under end mode, we'll set that to clamp and keep length. And the axis will make um, positive Y. We'll go negative Y since it's facing the wrong way, like that. So if we move the offset along, we've got our slug move along our path, which is great. Then what we can do is add a surface modifier here. There is a surface. And what we want to do is change it to mapping UV. And for surface, just drag the landscape in. And then what we're going to do is go up here, set the plane to X, Y, and then we need to put our path inside, oh, sorry, make the, the surface a child of the path. So scratch that, 
Great, so now we can see we've got our path that's actually following the contours of the landscape, which is what we want. So with the offset, we'll set that to 3 centimeters for now. And go into our spline wrap and just set the offset to 0 at frame 0. Control click that to set a keyframe. Come out to about 70 and drag it to 100%. Control click it. And just like that, you can see we've already got something going on. Just add a material to this landscape to differentiate it from our slug. We can see it's somewhat moving along the surface, but we've got a few problems here. Okay, so one of the key things to this is make sure that your path spline has enough segments to properly follow the contours of the surface. So under the path, I like to set it to cubic and intermediate points to natural. And number I just put up to about 64. And that usually gives you a pretty good result. If we scrub through now, we've got a much better result. It's looking pretty good. We can see that um, our slug's looking a bit chunky when it's going over this hill. So let's go in and under the sphere, let's give it, I don't know, say 128 segments. That might be way too much, but it's a lot smoother now. You can see here we get these nice ripples as it goes across the bumps. Okay, so anytime there's something uh, in the surface that is following that's really sharp, you can run into issues and there's not really much you can do about that, especially if you've got fairly thick looking geometry. But the nice thing is that this slug is really, well, it's still parametric, so we can change the radius like this, make it really fat. And obviously that's going to run into problems, it's just a bit crazy. But it can be cool. So you probably want to tone it down a bit more than that. Um, so if we bring that down. And then obviously the tape is still live as well. So we can, you know, play with that, make it a big blobby looking slug. Um, change the thong. I don't know. Maybe 60. Might help a little bit, I'm not sure. So with your taper, you've got your curvature. Is it really doing anything now? Because the strength's so low. You can change that. You can turn off fillet. And then, yeah, play with this. It's only really the Y that's going to do anything. You've got that there. And then, of course, in the sphere, under coordinates, you've got your scale properties you can play with. Just little things you can go in and tweak if you want. Some of them give pretty weird looking results. So there's probably not that much that's useful in there, but at least you know you can do it. So under taper, let's just go back and um, fix this up, turn on fill it, get more of a normal looking slug again. Pretty long one there. Under the spline wrap, of course, you've got this value, the two value, which will um, determine how much the object is stretched along the path. So you can just pick what you want there. Um, and another cool setting under rotation here is banking. You can't really see it with this particular shape, but if I was to go in and um, let's say make a slug look crazy like that, um, back under the spline wrap, under banking, you can see you can actually rotate it around. You may or may not need to do that, but it is an option. And you can tweak the size here as well. All right, so let's just go back to our original slug. So what can you do with this? Well, we've got our obvious things like our slug on the path. You could add a cloner to the slug. So go to MoGraph. Hold down Alt, get a cloner, and if we turn off the fixed clone option, we can change the distance here in the Y, and scrub through, we can get like a line of slugs. So you could do that if you want. Like that. 
Um, of course, it does work on deforming geometry. So if we were to, well, let's first have a look if we make this uh, spherical. We're going to change this object instantly to spherical and we'll see that our path automatically updates, which is really cool. So all we did was change that one option, our animation is still intact and our slug still conforms to this surface. That's just one thing that's really cool about it. And under the surface modifier, you can just change this U and V value to change the location of the path as well. As soon as you let go, it's going to update. Like that. And with the offset, I've got it set at 3 at the moment, but that's just to keep the slug just above the surface, okay? So you can change that if you want. You can also change the scale, which will change the way the path is conformed to the target object. Let's have a look over here. That's all right. Um, I thought something might have been a bit weird there under the sphere, but it's all good. So yeah, you can see with your geometry, it's going to depend on what your actual deforming geometry looks like as to how it behaves on the surface um, and how many segments, etc. More or less might be better. You'll just have to experiment with it. So back to this surface, you can change from UV to VU. I'll just map it um, vertically or horizontally, depending on what the setting is. So you can just get an instant change there. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty versatile. Change its offset back to 2 so it's close to the path. That's pretty good. Um, another thing you can do, say if we get rid of this landscape, just delete that, and we just add in a sphere, and we'll just call it target, spell that right, that'll be good, we'll set it to 32 segments, and I'll just make it, um, say about 250 centimeters, and let's just add a displacer to it. That in as a child, and under shading, grab noise, set the height to about 30 centimeters, and 35. Select the target, hold down Alt, and select the hypernerbs, smooth it out a little bit. We can even give it more height than that, let's go 45. Okay, so this is going to be call this target as well. Let's make this our new target object for our surface modifier. Drag that in and you can see the path automatically snaps that object and we've got our new deformable surface. Now what we can do under here go into the displacer under shading noise and animation speed we can go 0.1 and movement will go 1 in X and I've screwed that up we'll go down to speed 0.1 you can see now the surface is deforming we probably need to slow down our spline wrap animation though so let's add some frames here and just drag this last keyframe out just to slow it down a bit so we can see and let's just deform this thing a little bit more 55. You can see that our path is following the deformations of the sphere really nicely. And if we just take off the animation altogether on the spline wrap, so just control shift click the offset, just watch it static here. Just put it somewhere in the middle. Just watch it play back. You can see that it's actually just following the curvature, which is really cool.
nice and dynamic, everything's still parametric with our slug. Of course you don't have to have a slug, you can have whatever object you want, it's just that lends itself well to something that travels over the surface of an object. Okay, so let's take a look at the candle wax example now. If I just scrub this, you can see we've got the wax that comes up over the edge and drips down the side of the candle nicely. This is really just a proof of concept thing and an example of how you could use it. Obviously it's not realistic, wax won't come up over the edge of a candle like that and just drip down on its own accord. Uh, it's really just to show you an, a way that you could do this and something you could use it for. Okay, so um, if we go back, just have another look. It's just got a really nice motion, how the meta balls sort of stay together. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just show basically um, a little bit of R&D sort of behind this. So if I just grab a landscape and set it to X orientation like this, just going to show sort of the nuts and bolts behind this. Okay, so I do that and then I grab a sphere, drag that out to make it 15. Okay. So what we can do is, um, to this sphere, we'll go under the character tags and add a constraint. And let's give it a clamp. And under the clamp, the target's going to be the landscape. And we can see this line drawn between the two to show that there's a relationship there. If we um, bring this distance in and we go under 2, set that to surface and use normals. You can see when we drag this sphere around, it conforms again to the surface of this shape. And you will need to give it some distance, probably 8 centimeters or so, but it does a pretty good job. You can sort of just drag it around in the, in the uh, viewport there, and it's going to do its thing and just travel over the surface of that. Okay. So when I first started doing this, I thought, oh cool, you can just um, go in and set keyframes on this, and it's going to you know, just glide along the surface, I thought, too easy. No, that doesn't work. I'll just show you this. And it might have just been my ignorance, I don't know, but if we just play this back now, I'll turn off our meta balls. You can see it is really crazy. Okay, so that doesn't work. So the workaround of this, I thought, let's just try and um, chuck it into a null object. Since, um, you know, putting things in null objects does seem to help a lot of things in Cinema 4D. Let's just grab that. Let's just um, hit Alt-G to make that a child of a null. Let's just get the null object this time. And set a keyframe, but preferably at frame 0. So drag that back. Then come out and set another keyframe. And you can see as I move that across, it did travel along the surface. Let's just play it back. If we look, sure enough, it does conform and it works. The trouble with this is the null object just ends up way out of whack. Like you can see, initially it's starting over here. Now you could align it to the sphere, but as soon as you start to move it around and animate it in um, in X, Y, and Z, it just ends up all over the shop. I currently don't know a way to sort of solve this. You can't reconstrain it back to the sphere because that gives it a wacky original result again. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit weird, but it, it, it can work. Um, you can also uh, rotate this null as well and animate it that way if you wanted. So you can do it like that, which obviously isn't good for a flat object, but it would work, say, if you were you know, trying to make it move over a sphere like in our previous example. I've had a bit of a play with that, and it can work. It's just awkward to animate. So anyway, that's... Pretty much the premise, I guess, behind this candle example. Let's just delete these. Just wanted to show you how that does and doesn't work. Let's just delete that. If we come back over here to our candle. Let's just have a look at what we've got. So, using what I just showed, basically what I've got, I've animated, starting up here, a sphere or connected to a null so I've actually animated the null let's look at this first one here and you can see I've actually got three keyframes so one here one here and one down 
So it goes from the first to the second and then travels down. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then I made an instance of that, just a smaller version, and we can sort of see it if we scrub through. And that's uh, where the metaballs come in because it's obviously going to make a relationship between these two and join them to make it look like the melting wax. So it's the same thing, just slightly offset. Okay, so then I thought, okay, what I'll do is uh, add a tracer to give these a path, and then we can actually uh, put that into metaballs so it can actually create the stream. So here's our tracer, which is um, just above. So I've got essentially the tracer and the two nulls which are animated as a child of a metaball object. So if we turn on the metaballs, what it's going to do is take all those objects and um, join them together. Okay, just come through. And this is where you can go in and you know change the size of your spheres and play around with that. So that's pretty cool. You've got a bit of extra control there. Like that. And then uh, I added the, the metaball tag to the tracer. So again, you can sort of change the look and feel of this a little bit. Um, it can be pretty system heavy, so you just got to be careful. Um, I think I've already screwed that by dragging the radius down to zero. It's probably going to crash. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think it's going to come back. I think uh, I think it's over. So <laughs> let me just kill this and reset and come back. So here we are back in Cinema 4D after loading it back up. I uh, just got hammered by me uh, turning down this, this radius value here. Uh, to zero, which in turn made the mesh super dense and the computer hated it. So uh, I just thought I'd kill it and restart. So as I was saying, yeah, by having the um, the metaball tag on the tracer, it just gives you a bit more uh, look control for the metaballs. And um, yeah, just be careful with these when using the radius and um, the subdivision levels here. Okay, so that's all good. You can get your look and everything like that from there. But um, the thing with this is, that although it plays good in the viewport and the motion looks right here, one thing you'll find is when you go to render it, it just doesn't work. Because um, we've animated the null object and it sort of, you know, goes from point A to point B um, fairly linearly, I think the tracer object just has an issue in the um, picture viewer. And um, I tried everything, I couldn't get it to work properly. But there is a cool workaround, and um, in R14 they added this file format called Alembic um, from Industrial Light and Magic. So what we can do is um, bake out our metaballs and our tracer and bring that in as a, a super quick um, object that's going to read really fast and it's actually going to render correctly first and foremost. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that and uh, show you how that works. So you can just do it on a selection. So if I just select the metaball, it's going to take into account all the children here. At least that's what I um, what I think happens anyway. Um, I've only used it a couple of times, but that's how it seems to work. So go up to export, go Alembic, and we'll just call it Meta, and save, and we'll overwrite the existing and select your frame range. I'm just going to check selection only and spline curves as that's what the tracer creates. Just choose OK. And down here, it's just going to save out those frames and bake that for us. Just wait a second, it's pretty quick. Then what I can do is uh, merge that in. So just merge in the meta ABC file. Um, choose OK. If I turn off the meta balls, um, we can go through now and just scrub this and it comes out perfectly. I'll just turn off these other objects as well. Okay, so let's just see how quick that plays back and it's going to render perfectly as well that's just a good little workaround to sort of get uh, troublesome objects in your scene that aren't rendering correctly to render correctly um, and I think with that Alembic file format you can bake out all kinds of stuff so have a look into that just uh, have a look on the web well that's it another one down guys uh, thanks so much for watching and um, once again I hope you got something out of it if you want to keep up to date with what I'm up to Check out benwattsdesign.com, and I'm always putting up um, stuff on Vimeo anyway, 
um, under BW Design, like previews and test renders and R&D and stuff like that. I've added a tip jar underneath the tutorial, so if anyone feels extremely generous or they yeah, got something out of it and really liked it, you know, it's there. Don't have to, of course. Everything's absolutely free. So, um, yeah, thanks so much, guys, for all your feedback and comments. I'll keep pumping these out when I get free time in between jobs. I'll see you next time.